There is no such thing as one vaccine passport. What's happening is countries are developing a way that they can see whether people have been vaccinated. Some countries plan to use that as an entry, entry requirement for certain areas of their countries. Others don't, but there's no standardized vaccine passport as such. Some countries are talking about letting people not enter a restaurant, for example, unless they have a vaccine passport, whereas others are saying they will use it to determine whether or not someone can fly safely on a domestic airline. It's, it's like an official statement uh, that should be accepted by authorities wherever you present that document. It's verifiable. It should not be able to be forged. And it allows you to be accepted into places where the requirement of vaccination is a condition of entry. Passports have never been used, but what has been uh, occurring in the past is that there was a requirement under the international health regulations for vaccination for a person arriving in a country from a country where yellow fever outbreak is going on present. That's been used in the past under the international health regulations. It's used less and less, however, because countries make the decision whether or not to use it. And in fact, most passengers and travelers have taken it upon themselves to get vaccinated to prevent themselves from becoming infected. Vaccine passports would be useful for individuals to know whether or not they're protected against serious illness or mortality. So for that purpose, a vaccine passport would be useful. I myself have a vaccine register that I was vaccinated, and that's very useful. But to fly internationally, um, I think it's just not an equitable use of a vaccine passport because of the fact that there will be many people who can't obtain vaccine and who may need to travel, but just can't because the airline refuses their admission. It will allow receiving countries to know that people who are coming in have indeed been protected. Now that means that they are unlikely to get ill whilst they are in that country, and they are unlikely to bring infection with them when they come into that country. So it gives assurance to the traveler that they are likely to be safe, and it gives assurance to the receiving country that this person is unlikely to be a burden on their health system and unlikely to bring the infection. There is an issue of equity, and that is that people who have been vaccinated may appear to be more privileged than those who have not been vaccinated. In the UK, where our vaccine programme has been astonishingly effective, and we are now down to people in their 20s being vaccinated, there really is no issue of equity because vaccine is available for everybody. If you choose not to be vaccinated, then you are electing to put yourself in a different position to those who have accepted to be vaccinated. So the equity argument, I believe, does not stand if vaccine is available to everybody. We understand from vaccination with um, some of the vaccines, they, they permit the virus to still be carried in the nose, but it's at a decreased level in many people and therefore it can't be transmitted. So a vaccination of someone traveling would prevent others from getting infected from them should they be carrying that virus in their nose because it would likely be at a low level and not be transmissible. That again is only in 95 to 98% of those people who are vaccinated because it's not 100% effective, the vaccine. Neither is it a guarantee that there won't be other people infected from people who have been vaccinated. We know from data that's been collected by the United Kingdom and other countries that importation of a virus is at present quite a low risk because of the fact that people are having PCR tests before they travel. And in follow-up studies after people have arrived, there have been very few imported viruses. So depending on where people travel from, the risk of carrying that virus into another country would be low, depending on their vaccination status and a whole series of other indicators, such as whether or not they've had infection in the past. So it has to be an authorized vaccine. It has to be given with the right number of doses, and there has to be a sufficient interval after the final dose 
to know that in immunity has been uh, induced. Countries will make their own rules or within groups of countries there will be agreed rules and they may insist that the vaccine uh, that shows on your passport is one of the vaccines that they have uh, accepted as being safe and effective. Uh, and so a vaccine that comes outside of that process may not be acceptable. New variants, we don't know yet what they will do as far as vaccination. We hope that they won't escape the protection offered by vaccines. And to date, all the known vaccines, all the licensed vaccines, have not shown that they haven't been protective against any of the variants. But there may be in the future variants with, which would escape vaccination. And then what would be required would be a booster vaccination in those people who have had um, the vaccination with possibly a vaccine containing new information about that variant strain. The most important thing in any outbreak is to detect cases and to rapidly respond to them. Countries in Europe and North America didn't do that early on in the outbreak, whereas in Asia, they did. And we can see that Asia has been able to maintain good detection systems and good response systems, including effective contact tracing. And they've been able to keep transmission very low and mortality very low. We would hope that all countries will develop that capacity eventually and be able to detect and respond rapidly if a variant or any virus enters their country from another. And we don't know necessarily how well all of the vaccines are going to perform against variants, and we don't know how well they'll perform against future variants. And, it, you know, you may be in a position where your vaccine passport lasts longer than your immunity. So there are important things we have still got to find out that will influence how we recognize the value of our vaccine passport. certificates are not yet recommended for travel by the World Health Organization or by international groups because of the fact that there's an inequitable distribution of vaccines. In the future, if they may be used, then countries would have to make the decision. They will make their own decision. They're, they're uh, in fact, sovereign as to whether or not they want to permit people coming in who have been vaccinated and show them a certificate of vaccination. The airlines may also require that at some point in time, but for now, airlines are guaranteeing safe travel by a test before travel and then wearing a mask in travel and decreasing the refreshment services. A vaccine certificate would be very useful for someone to, to remember and to remind others that they've been effectively vaccinated and are protected against serious illness and death. Some countries are actually considering whether or not to make work, make it required that workers in elderly care homes, for example, have a vaccination. In that instance, a vaccination passport would be very useful or a vaccination certificate in order to show that they've been vaccinated. So there will be applications. Countries will determine that they need to ensure that all employees in certain domains are vaccinated. And then a certificate that proves vaccination will be very important whether or not that's just a certificate or what you're calling a vaccine passport. Well, I think that there are three main areas where a vaccine passport will have utility. One of them is for international travel. Another is for uh, entry into a workplace, because there are certainly a number of work environments where you want to be sure that a person who is coming in is indeed protected. And that is true for healthcare, you may want to insist that people who are coming into a healthcare environment have been vaccinated, just as we insist that uh, surgeons have been vaccinated against hepatitis B. So we've got international travel, we've got the workplace, and there may also be social environments where one of the uh, conditions of entry would be to show that you have got a vaccine passport. So you want to go to uh, a concert, you want to go to the theatre, um, and one of the ways of being sure that you will not infect and you will not be infected uh, will be to show your valid vaccine passport. So I think that there are probably three big areas where passports will have uh, utility. 
it's clearly everyone's right to accept or not accept a vaccine. And hopefully countries can do a good enough job to get persons vaccinated so that they don't have to worry about who's vaccinated and who's not. The vaccine's being offered by most countries at no cost. People should take advantage of this and get vaccinated when it's their turn and when vaccine's available. The information is of no great importance. The fact that I have had a vaccine, the fact that I've had whatever number of doses uh, and which vaccine I had. Um, my name is in the local telephone directory. I don't see that having details of my vaccination is any more personal information of importance than being in a phone directory. So far, we know that there is an acceptance within the European Union uh, that people who have been vaccinated with an authorized vaccine and uh, can show that they have had the requisite two doses or one dose, and it was two weeks since their last uh, dose, can travel freely within the European Union. There is a great deal of harmonization already uh, in place between regulatory authorities. So we know that the FDA in the United States, the European Medicines Agency in Europe, the UK regulator, the Australian regulator, these all work closely together so that they are working to very much the same criteria of safety, efficacy, manufacturing, and other criteria of quality. That's not necessarily the case for all regulatory authorities. Where countries don't have a competent regulatory authority, WHO provides that on their behalf. So there's going to be a situation, I'm sure, where some of the regulatory authorities are working together to the same standards. WHO will be providing a system for countries that can't do this work themselves. And there may be some outliers that have authorized vaccines and they may not possibly be accepted everywhere. That is a possibility.